What's up, what's up, what's up, what's going on, Cloud Scholars? My name is Kieran Tross, and this is the final part, part four of Azure Blob Hunting. Um, if this is the, if you're now getting on this video, um, I would suggest that you uh, make sure you look at the first three parts where I introduce you to Azure Blob Hunting, talk about what it is, uh, go through some of the prerequisites, installing the tools to do some blob hunting, and then third video, which is the one previously to this one, which is how to hunt. So with this video, I want to concentrate on how to defend um, against blob hunting, but I also want to talk about how to um, take a look at your environment and identify when you've been compromised. So on the screen, you should see uh, the Azure portal. I'm in Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to Security Alerts. And within Security Alerts, we'll be able to see exactly some of the stuff that we have Defender for Cloud enabled in our environment. Um, I enabled uh, Defender for Cloud on that storage account, which is storage locator 23, locate 23. And right here we have an alert and it's letting us know that uh, publicly accessible storage containers have been scanned. No publicly accessible data was discovered. So I want to talk a little bit about um, the kind of different alerts that you get with uh, blob hunting. And then I'm going to go through and show you exactly um, how you can go about um, looking at these alerts and discovering exactly what's going on in your environment. All right, so let's uh, talk about Microsoft Defender for Cloud Alerts for Blob Hunting. So what we have is uh, three types of scan related alerts. Um, so the first one we're gonna jump into is the publicly accessible storage container successfully discovered. So what this one uh, basically tells us, it detects successful discoveries of publicly open storage containers in the storage account performed by a scan and script or tool. Then we have publicly accessible storage containers unsuccessfully scanned, um, detects a series of failed attempts to scan uh, publicly open storage containers performed in the last hour. Then we have publicly accessible storage containers with potential sensitive data have been exposed, and that detects a successful scan of containers with names indicating they might contain sensitive data. Containers are flagged as potentially sensitive by comparing their names to container names that statistically have low public Exposure suggesting they might store sensitive information. So then we also have data exfiltration detection. So this, these two um, uh, alerts tell you if um, something was taken out. So unusual amount of data extracted from a storage account. Then you have unusual amount of data extracted from a storage account, uh, number of blobs anomaly. So um, those are some of the uh, detections that you get uh, and alerts you get uh, from using Microsoft Defender on your storage accounts. Um, there are a couple others out there as well, but I just want to kind of talk about these uh, two specific categories for this video. All right, so now we have a little bit of understanding of these storage account um, alert names. What I want to do is I want to go to this one right here, the first one that says uh, no public accessible data was discovered. And I want to little, just go through this a little bit. So it says the same uh, alert name. It gives us the severity. It says it's active. If you hit down here, you can say it's in progress. Somebody's looking at it. You dismissed if it was like, hey, this was just us testing something out. And then you can say resolve to say what, what it was. So this is going to be somebody in your security department really taking care of that. It gives you the activity time. And then it says someone has attempted to expose containers that allow public access in Azure storage account. And it gives you the storage account name. 77 attempts were made. Now, I made a few attempts. <laughs> but I didn't make 77 attempts. So somebody is really trying to get um, at our information. Um, Say so it was unsuccessful to guess legitimate container names in their storage account. So remember in the last video, they were going through trying to figure out container names. So they're saying they unsuccessfully guessed the legitimate container names in the storage container. Now, this is only showing two. Um, now, obviously I know the storage container from the previous video and I was able to pull that information up and also download that Word document. Um, but I didn't see anything come up for data exfiltration. So it might take a little while longer um, for that information to pop up, but that's perfectly fine. We still got a lot of information here. So next we have this area where it says view full details. So if I so go to view full details, I have all this stuff here, but what pops up is it says, hey, Azure AD user, it says Azure AD user authentication was not used because remember we put it to publicly anonymous access. Then it's given us the number of failed access attempts. So somebody was really trying to get some information there. Um, user agent um, is letting us know exactly what they used when they were trying to get in there. 
um, is giving us some more information, Azure Blobs. Down here, it says Azure Resource. It's just gonna pretty much bring up the storage account name again for us. So if we go down here, we get through all this resource ID information. We already know it's storage locate 23. And then it gives us the IP. So this says 1022.4.4. So if I come over here and I type in virtual machine, remember I use the um, virtual machine within our um, environment and this hunting PC. If I click on this hunting PC and I look at the IP address 1022.4.4. So that's good. We know that's what I used when I was trying to get in. So this is letting us know that this is accurate because that's the IP that we came from and then it's giving us the source IP. Now the great thing about this, it says next take action. So there is a bunch of different things that you can do in order to take action um, for the storage account of uh, what's going on. So it says mitigate the threat. It says remove any sensitive data from public accessible storage containers. Um, it also gives us the open logs. Let's see if anything comes up for our logs. List storage keys. It says six days ago. So it's letting us know, hey, um, it this whole list, that list API it's letting us know that that was ran against the storage account. So it's giving us that information. So that's good. It lets it let, let us know, hey, this list API was run on that um, storage account. So um, let's see, change history, uh, no change history there. It gives us the JSON information and so on and so forth. So I just want to come back here to this whole take action. And... Um, it gives us, uh, to mitigate the threats, it's giving us a whole bunch of different stuff. It says remove any sensitive data. It says make sure users uploading content to publicly accessible storage containers are aware that the uploaded data is publicly accessible. It says consider adding a random suffix to container names or using randomly generated names. Remember, they want to guess your storage account. So if you do something random, it's going to make it harder for them to guess. Um, and then it says where applicable is recommended to disable unauthenticated access to blob containers. Now, sometimes you may want to do unauthenticated access, but I'm pretty sure that information is not going to be anything that you are, um, or that you will have a problem with it being seen. Obviously you will say, okay, this is something that I want people to be able to open and be able to view, et cetera, et cetera. So then they go on to uh, prevent future attacks. Oh, so it says your top three activity security recommendations. It gives us, you know, storage accounts should use private link connections. It gives us storage accounts should restrict network access, so on and so forth. Plus, there's uh, uh, other recommendations here. And then they go into uh, trigger automated response as well, uh, suppress similar alerts. And then it also configure email notifications as well if something was compromised. What I want to do is I want to come over here. I want to go to storage account. And I want to show you a couple different things that you can see in your storage account to see what's going on. So if we come over here, we have activity log, um, see if anything comes up. Nothing's showing up right now within the last six hours. But if we come down to metrics, within metrics, you can see what's going on in here as well. So you have a couple different things you can do. You have storage account and you have your account right here. And then you can do your metrics. You can go to transactions. And you can look and see exactly, hey, if something's a little bit out of the norm, you know, for this, obviously, this is testing purposes. So, you know, I, we know exactly what's coming up here. But if you look and you're doing some um, investigation, you can look at your metrics um, and you can see uh, if something's out of the norm where the transactions are a little bit higher than usual. But what I want to do as well is I want to go through a list of different items that you can do to defend against um, Azure blob hunting. So... One of the things I want to talk about when it comes to protect storage accounts, uh, we already showed, I already showed you about Defender and you know the, the alerts and what comes up there um, and why it's important to use Azure Defender on your storage account so you can see if somebody does try to compromise any information. But what I want to do now is talk about protecting storage accounts and I kind of already started diving into that with the Azure Defender. So one of the things you can do is use policies, right? So one policy is storage account public access should be disallowed. Now, one thing about Microsoft's um, cloud, it doesn't really matter, it's Microsoft Cloud, uh, AWS, Google Cloud, it's pretty easy to do a misconfiguration. So policies really help us to prevent that from happening in our organization. So back over at the Azure portal, I'm just gonna go to policy. I have it here already. 
and I'm going to go to defend definition, excuse me. And once this populates, what I want to do is come over here to search and I'm just going to type in storage. And this is um, something you should really talk about within your organization. So hopefully you have some kind of cloud committee in your organization that you all are trying to are in the progress of uh, doing the cloud adoption framework, CAF. Um, so to keep your organization um, intact and things are working in a certain way and processes. So here you can see there's a bunch of different um, storage account um, uh, policies. So you say storage account keys should not be expired. Uh, if we keep continuing to configure virtual networks to use specific workspaces. So let me type in storage account. Let me see what comes up there. And um, there's a bunch of different storage accounts should have infrastructure encryption, secure transfers to storage accounts should be enabled. Uh, storage accounts should restrict network access. There's a ton of different things here. Uh, it's really up to you what you want to do. Um, but this is one of the best ways of doing things. So if somebody creates a storage account and they try to put in uh, public um, access, you can set it up so that this way that um, action will be um, uh, alerted, right? So you can say, okay, this is going to come up as an alert or this is going to be modified so that anybody who puts it as public, it now goes to private so that it won't, um, you, you're not compromising your organization. And you can do a couple other different things with that as well. There's a, there's a plethora of information that you can do, a, a plethora of options that you can have with your storage accounts and you can just go through these policies, but the policies is one of the best ways of preventing that, that uh, misconfiguration from happening. So another one is enable diagnostic settings. So this you can do from policies as well, but I'm gonna show you exactly where this is at. So I'm gonna come over to my storage account again, and I'm going to click on this storage account. And if I come over here to um, diagnostic settings, where is that at? Right here, um, I can now set up my storage account for diagnostic settings and I could point um, the logs to a specific location. Now I have a number of different things I can do. So I can see all the transactions and I can send to Lottie Analytics Workspace. I can archive to another storage account. I can stream to an event hub or I can send to a, a partner solution. So check storage account access level for containers. So back over here, if I go to my storage account, and I go to containers and I click on containers, change access level. So anonymous access, you can do private, no anonymous access there. And another thing is use automation. So um, you can do something with logic apps with it. If you recall, actually, let me go back over to it. If I go to the security alert right here, it says trigger automated response. So I can trigger a logic app if something does, a security alert does come in. This is one of the best things you can do. So if a security alert does come in, you already have your system automated to defend against it. Instead of, I don't really like the whole configure email notification because now, you know, people are so mobile. You might not be in front of the computer. You know, it just takes some time. So if you want to do a combination of the two, which you trigger something plus send an email alert, I think that that should be suffice, but I wouldn't just leave it as an email alert because it might come in during a time when you're on the road driving or even when you're sleeping. And then another thing you could do is you could use a SIM tool as well for threat hunting as well. So you can set up your storage accounts and then send, set up some queries for your SIM tools. So let's say you're using Sentinel um, as your Sentinel. Um, you can use that to protect your storage accounts. And then finally, we have the firewalls. So if I go back to the storage account and I come down to networking, this is exactly what I'm referring to over here, which is your firewall. So right now it's enabled from all networks. I can disable that and I can say enable from selected virtual networks and I can have my cer certain virtual networks in here that I want to enable access to, which is a really good option. Or if I want to go even more and I want to make sure that the information only works within the Microsoft backbone and it's not public facing, not on the internet, I will use a private endpoint as well. So that is it. That is the whole series for Azure um, Blob Hunting. 
Um, I took a lot of time to make this video. I really enjoyed making it. Um, I like talking about cybersecurity. Um, I hope that this information was beneficial to you. Um, I always like to go at the end of the video, ask you to like and subscribe because I feel like at that moment, I, um, I have earned your like and your subscribe. So please, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe and also share this with a friend. Um, if they are learning something about cybersecurity, uh, I try to make these videos as um, basic as I can because I want to make sure that you're able to digest and understand the information that I am providing to you. So as always, you know what the uh, goal is here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.